Unit 1. Recording 2. Hello. Hi, Lisa. I'm in the shopping centre. Hi, Millie. What are you doing? I'm looking round the shops. It's Saturday. Yeah, of course. Honestly, you buy new clothes every Saturday. Well, nearly every Saturday. You're always buying new clothes. So what are you looking for today? One of those new skirts. You know, like everyone's wearing this autumn. Well, I'm not wearing one. I'm wearing a pair of old jeans. Is there anything special you want to talk about? Because actually, I'm cleaning my room. Yes, there is. Only you're being so impatient, you don't deserve to hear it. OK, sorry. I'm listening. Well, you know that leather bag you want? Like the navy blue one you lost? None of the shops have one. Whenever I go into town, I always look. But I never find a blue one. Well, I'm in front of a shop window and I'm looking at a navy blue bag right now. Do you want it? I can buy it for you. Oh, yes! Those bags sell really fast because everyone thinks they're really cool as well as useful. Yeah, and navy blue bags are getting really fashionable. I know. It'll be gone if I wait till Monday. I'll pay you when I see you. OK. Oh, thank you, Millie. Sorry I was cross. That's OK. Bye. Bye. Recording 3 You will hear an interview with a man called Martin Holloway, who is a sound engineer. For questions 1 to 7, choose the best answer, A, B or C. In our series about careers in the arts, I'm talking today to Martin Holloway, who is a sound engineer. Martin, tell us how you spend your time. Good morning, Jake. Well, each event I do is different, but I usually set up the equipment before the show, do the sound checks and look after the sound during the performance. Of course, it's not my fault if the band isn't very good and what you hear is out of tune or something. <laughs> People sometimes call me a disc jockey, but I have to explain it's so much more than that. This weekend, I'm working at a music festival, and I mostly work out of doors. There's lots of outdoor work if you want it, as we can also work on films and TV. Hmm. And how did you get into the business? I went to university to study sound recording. While I was there, I played in several bands, but I wasn't really serious about it. I also worked behind the scenes at lots of student gigs and shows, though, mixing the sound. While I was doing that, I got to know quite a few professional sound engineers, and a couple of them offered me paid work. That was ten years ago. My course was fantastic, of course, but it wasn't enough to get me started. So when does a project actually begin for you? Some people think we just turn up on the day. For a big event, I might be there for a few days. For a smaller one, I get there early before the band starts rehearsing. But it all begins before that, when the booking is made with the band or their agent. I get a call and I start sorting things out straight away. I also always visit the place where it's all going to happen a few days before the actual show. So what's it like during a show? Well, if I've done all my preparation properly, normally there really isn't much for me to do at all, and that's how it should be. Mm. I talk to the band and make sure they're happy with everything before the show. It's hard to do so while they're playing, and I refuse to work with equipment that I think might break down. You must notice a great difference in the equipment from when you first started. <laughs> Definitely. You can't compare the sound you get now. And we can all afford fantastic equipment, as it's so much cheaper. But that doesn't particularly benefit me, as I usually use the band's equipment or what's available at a venue. Mm. For me, the fact that everything is getting smaller all the time, I can carry a whole day's recording in my pocket, that's helped me enormously. Mm. So if someone wants a job like yours, what should they do? Get lots of experience, make contacts, and ideally do a course. 
You can pick up some of the technical stuff by volunteering, but I'm always telling people who want to be a sound engineer, and they never listen, they just don't realise that what's crucial is being able to get on with people and get them to understand what you need them to do. If you can't do that, then you won't get the jobs. An interest in music means it is more enjoyable, of course, and most of us have been in bands, but we weren't necessarily much good at it. <laughs> And are there any disadvantages? I'm willing to work anywhere. I've worked in the mountains, in freezing temperatures, in the desert, in hot, tiny theatres, but that variety appeals to me. I'm not a very patient person, and I spend a lot of time hanging around between setting things up and the show actually happening. I don't enjoy that. Mm. And some people hate being on the move all the time, but I don't mind living out of a suitcase. Thank you, Martin, for talking to us. Now listen again. Unit 2. Recording 4. Hello, Jack. Come in. Hello, Gran. How are you? Fine, thanks, Jack. What about you? Oh, you know, too much college work. We had an exam on Thursday, but I went to London last Saturday with some mates. We had a great time. Oh, yes. I suppose you spent all your money. No, it wasn't really expensive. We caught the coach, so it was only £10 return. But isn't it slow? Well, we did some revision for our exams while we were travelling, so it didn't matter. Well done. And where did you go? Oh, you know, round the shops. That's what I did too, but not in London. I was hoping to find a new jacket, but there wasn't anything I liked. And then we went to see a film, but the brilliant thing was, when we were queuing for the cinema, we saw a really famous footballer. He was buying a burger from a stall near us, like an ordinary person, and all the crowds were walking past, but nobody noticed him except me. So did you get his autograph? No, I didn't want to embarrass him. Oh, when I was your age, I used to collect all the autographs of film stars and singers and so on. I would go up to town on my own and wait outside the theatre till they came out. Really? Yes. And I used to scream at pop concerts. <laughs> I really enjoyed myself when I was a teenager. But don't tell your mother. She never used to do anything like that. She was always worrying about her homework. <laughs> OK. So, do you want to hear about the club we went to after the cinema? You bet. Well, it was really... Unit 3. Recording 5. Can you hold the doors a minute, Mike? I've got a big bag here. Hi, Lucy. Nice to see you. Up to the fourth floor? Yes, please. Have you just finished work? Actually, I finished at lunchtime today because they're replacing our computers. So I've been at the gym this afternoon. Are you going out tonight? No, I don't think so. Why? Are you inviting me somewhere? Oh, no. I've got lots of work to do. I've actually spent all day trying to write a history essay and I still haven't finished it. I have to hand it in tomorrow. I started it last week. Well, sorry I can't help you with that. After you. I never enjoyed studying history at school and I wasn't very good at it either. I don't need any help with the essay. But you can help me by not playing your saxophone. What? Huh? I'm sorry, I just can't stand it anymore. I've lived next door since June and you've played the saxophone every night for at least an hour. But I thought you liked it. I've lived here for two years. Nobody's ever complained before, so I'm really surprised. This is the first time anyone has asked me not to play. Why haven't you told me this before? I've tried lots of times, but I was afraid of sounding rude. So, would you like me to play more quietly? No, Mike. I don't want you to play at all. Tonight, and ideally never again. I tell you what, I'll learn some new tunes. 
Why don't you suggest some? Oh... Unit 4. Recording 6. Hi, Richard. I'm home. Where are you? Upstairs, Mum. In my room. Oh, Richard. Whatever have you been doing? I've been painting my room. Yes, I can see that. Why did you change colour halfway through? Well, I'd done the ceiling and I'd painted one wall when I ran out of paint. So I went to the shop for some more, but then I realised the second pot was a slightly different colour. That's why it looks a bit odd. But why were you painting anyway? I thought you'd planned lots of things to do with your friends. Oh, they were all busy in the end. And yesterday afternoon, I was bored. I'd been to town for a few hours, you know, round the centre. I'd done the shopping, everything on your list. And I'd finished all my homework, so I decided to paint my room. Hmm. Well, I suppose you can put some posters up. But look at the carpet! Why didn't you cover it up? Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Well, I can't think about all this now. I've had such a hard day. Why? What's happened? Well, the meeting was difficult, and then I had such a long journey home. I'd been driving for only an hour when the car broke down. Oh, no! Anyway, it took me much longer than normal, so I'm just going into my room to have a lie down. Don't go in there just yet, Mum. Let me tell you about... Well, come and tell me in my room so I can sit down. That's what I wanted to tell you. I've painted your room too. And it was quite difficult, so you might not be too pleased. It was supposed to be a surprise. Unit 5. Recording 7. Conversation 1. Hello? Hello, Tom. It's Claire. Hi, Claire. How are you? Fine. Are you reporting on the conference in Amsterdam? I thought maybe we could travel together. That would be good, but I've already booked my flight. People are travelling from all over the world, so I decided to book early. Well, maybe I can get on the same one. I'm flying with British Airways and my plane leaves Edinburgh on Tuesday at 11.05. It arrives at Amsterdam Airport at 13.40. It's quick, isn't it? When does the conference actually begin? It starts on Wednesday at 9.30, so you need to get there on Tuesday. The main speaker is arriving at the conference on Tuesday afternoon, and I'm interviewing him at 6.30. OK, I'll let you know what I can arrange. See you. Bye. Conversation 2 Tom! Hello. Hi, Steve. How are you? Oh, you're in a hurry. Where are you going? I'm playing badminton in a few minutes with Paul. But what about me and you? We haven't played for ages. What are you doing tomorrow evening? I usually play at about seven. Oh, sorry. I'll be working then. I'm flying to a conference in Amsterdam tomorrow morning. But what about the weekend? I'm not working then. I'm having my eyes tested on Saturday afternoon, but I'm free the rest of the weekend. OK, let's make it Sunday morning. About ten at the sports centre. Fine. See you there. Bye then. Bye. Conversation 3 Good afternoon, sir. What name is it, please? Tom Hughes. Ah, yes. Room 341. Are you having dinner here tonight? I haven't decided yet. I'm interviewing someone at 6.30, so I probably won't be back in time. 
I think I'll get a meal in town. And breakfast? Would you like to have it in the dining room or in your room? Uh, oh, in the dining room, I think. No, actually, I'll have breakfast in my room, please. Here's the key then, sir. Take the lift to the third floor and turn left. Thank you. Oh, just a minute. There's a message for you, sir. It's from your newspaper office in Edinburgh. Oh, thanks for telling me. I'll ring the office now. Conversation 4 So, you got here in the end, Claire. Yes, but your flight was full, and I couldn't get on a plane till Wednesday. So I missed the first day of the conference. <clears throat> what would you like to drink, sir? I'll have some fizzy water, please. Claire? I'll have the same, please. Anyway, what did I miss, Tom? Well, the first day was spent going over the same old stuff, you know. In a hundred years' time, the world will be a very different place. There'll be millions more people, but there won't be much oil available for energy. And people live much longer. You know, that kind of thing. It's tomorrow that they'll start trying to come to some agreement about what they should do about it all. Anyway, I interviewed the main speaker, and I've written my article about him. It'll be in the newspaper tomorrow. I'll read all about it there, then. I mustn't spend too long having dinner, though. I want to do some preparation for tomorrow. Oh, right. OK, then. Recording 8. You will hear a tutor talking to a group of students about a geography trip to New Zealand. For questions 1 to 10, complete the sentences with a word or short phrase. Good morning. I know you have a folder with all the information about our geography trip to New Zealand, but I want to go over the main points. As you know, our flight departs at 10.30, so we need to be at the airport at 8.30. Firstly, why New Zealand when it's so far away? We could, of course, go to the European Alps to see mountains. But in New Zealand, we can see a huge variety of landscapes. Not only mountains, but also volcanoes. And, of course, it's surrounded by oceans, so that's why we've chosen it. There's plenty to keep us busy. During our first week, we're staying in a very rural area on the South Island, which has stayed much the same over the last 30 years. There is some tourism now, but agriculture remains the main employer, although the emphasis isn't quite the same. Where most farmers used to keep sheep, there are now more cows, and recently also deer. So we will be looking at why that has happened. We are spending our second week in an even more remote part on the West Coast. There, our main focus will be the beaches. Many of them are surrounded by forests and are quite difficult to get to, but there are roads or tracks down to all the ones we want to study. While we are in that part of the island, we're going on a couple of boat trips. You'll be able to see the amazing trees which cling to the cliff sides, and the birds, of course. You might be lucky and catch sight of a penguin, the yellow-crested ones which live round there and are not often seen. The weather on the west coast is very changeable, so it's important to have clothes for every season, hats and sunglasses, as well as waterproofs, as I'd expect we'll have some rain, but most people are aware of that. What they don't expect is the insects. They'll be waiting for us, so you need a very good repellent to stop them biting. We'll be working all day and we'll go for a walk every evening. If it's fine, I hope you'll get some good shots of the sunset. It's one of the best places in the world for that. And if you're interested in bird watching, you'll have time for that too. Maybe we'll see some of the fishing boats too, as they return after a day at sea. Our last week is in Queenstown. It's really important that you have a questionnaire ready, so make sure you prepare that this week before we start travelling. You'll be going out talking to visitors and businesses, and when you get back, you'll write a report, which you can use as the basis for a dissertation about tourism later on. There's a free weekend when we arrive in Queenstown, which is a very active place. 
Most tourists have a go at some of the extreme sports like skydiving and river surfing, but our students usually decide to go walking, probably because it's cheaper. But also the scenery is stunning, and you really get to see more of it on foot than if you're jet skiing at top speed. You all have a list of essential equipment. We're staying in fairly remote areas, so we probably won't get a chance to buy much. Bring comfortable walking shoes and make sure you have a bag to carry everything in. You need a minimum of one notebook, ideally one with a hard cover that won't fall apart if it rains, and of course plenty of pens and pencils. We're hiring everything we need for our overnight stays, the majority of which will be spent in tents. Four people in each, but we are also spending the odd night in hostels and basic hotels. Now, any questions? Now listen again. Unit six, recording nine. Good afternoon. My name is Simon Trite, and I'm here from High Time Radio Corporation to interview you. Now that you've had time to settle in, we're going to do a series about your adventures here on Wild Rock. So, uh, how are you finding life here in the wild? Pretty exciting, huh?、Oh, well, actually, we're about to leave. What? You can't be. You were going to stay here for at least a year. Look, we're fed up. We're fed up with the cold and the wind and the mud. And the rain. It's not raining now, but it's going to rain soon. See those clouds over the hill? Huh? So we know it's going to rain. And it's the same almost every day. So we're going to pack up our stuff. We're going to send a message to the mainland, and we're going to leave as soon as possible. Everyone's going to be very surprised when you arrive. Aren't you embarrassed to let the weather defeat you? By the end of this week, we'll have survived longer than anyone else in a place like this. By the end of this week, we'll have been living here for nearly six months, and that's enough. But surely it's not really that bad. <laughs> no. Tell you what, why don't you try it? What? Yes, you can stay here. We're going to the mainland. We're going to eat a big hot meal as soon as we find a restaurant, and we're not going to talk to any reporters until we've had a long sleep in warm, dry beds. Wait for me! You aren't going to leave me here all alone, are you? Hey, that's my boat! Oh no! Now what am I going to do? Recording ten. One. Look in your mirror. Is it time for a change? Come and work out at Transformers Fitness Center. Together, you and Transformers can make you a stronger, slimmer, and more self-confident person. Our professional advisors will help you to plan a sensible route to better health. Call in this weekend for a friendly welcome and see our excellent facilities. We're at 25 Market Street, and we're open from eight in the morning till eight in the evening. Two. Looking for a really wonderful day out next summer? Come to the best wildlife park in the country. We've got the most magnificent lions here at the Animal Wonder Park. In addition to the funniest monkeys you've ever seen, phone two seven three one five six for our amazing brochure, and take advantage of our special offers for families. Three. Do you have a full-time job? Do you feel tired all the time trying to keep the house clean as well? Don't wear yourself out. Call the Sparklers. You'll come back to fresh carpets, shining sinks and surfaces, and no sticky finger marks on the paintwork. Phone two seven three nine eight nine. You'll be surprised by our reasonable prices. Four. Hurry on down to the game centre in Spice Lane. 
There are fantastic savings on new and pre-owned games for everyone. We've got the greatest variety of games ever. And astonishing deals this week only. The Game Center has thousands of special deals. The latest road races and fantasy lands. Stunning graphics. The most thrilling battles. Come to the Game Center today. Unit 8, Recording 11 And here I am at the City Stadium and the sun is shining. And finally, the players are coming onto the pitch. As I was saying earlier, there were such terrible traffic jams in the city today that the match is starting late. Most of the spectators have been waiting patiently in their seats since two o'clock. But now, as the players come out, they're cheering happily. And the whistle goes. Rossi has the ball and is running steadily down the pitch. But, oh no! The game has hardly started. Only two minutes have gone and he's fallen heavily on the ground. He's so experienced in these kinds of conditions that he rarely falls. But he's OK. And he has the ball. Now Parker is running quickly towards the goal to take the ball from Rossi. Parker is playing incredibly well. But, of course, that's what we expect from him. Last week he scored the winning goal to take his team into the semi-final. It's often Parker who scores that important goal. And... He has! He scored! And the crowd are roaring really loudly, so it's difficult to make myself heard. That was a marvellous goal by Parker. Unit 9. Recording 12. Hello, Dad. Ah, Mina. Have you charged your phone at last? Yes, I have. Why? You didn't check your phone this morning, did you? What are you talking about? I sent you three texts and you didn't answer. <sighs> have you been checking up on me? No, I haven't. I was just starting to get a bit worried. You promised to phone me yesterday, didn't you? Yes, I did, but I forgot to charge my phone. Sorry. OK. I sounded angry. I'm sorry. So am I. I don't want to have a fight about it. Neither do I. You know your mother and I miss you when you're away at college, don't you? Yes, of course I do. And you'll definitely come home for Mum's birthday at the weekend, won't you? Don't worry. I will. You can meet me at the station, can't you? Yes, I can. Your train gets in at six, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's great. Mum doesn't know I'm coming, does she? No, she doesn't. Let's keep it a surprise for her, shall we? Oh, yes, let's. See you on Friday, then. I'm really looking forward to seeing Mum's face. So am I. OK, darling. See you then. See you, Dad. Bye. Recording 13. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions 1 to 8, choose the best answer A, B or C. Question 1. You overhear a girl leaving a voicemail message. Hi, Nadia. Just wanted to talk to you about my birthday party on Saturday. We're all going to the Mansion restaurant, as you know, and I've booked for 12. Well, Helena has just said she can't come, and I was wondering about inviting Nikki instead. She's fun, but you know what I mean, don't you, when I say she can be a bit loud and not everyone gets on with her. I think I know what you'll say, but let me know what you think. Ring me back as soon as you can, won't you? Hope you can still come. Hi, Nadia. Just wanted to talk to you about my birthday party on Saturday. We're all going to the Mansion restaurant, as you know, and I've booked for 12. Well, Helena has just said she can't come, and I was wondering about inviting Nikki instead. 
She's fun, but you know what I mean, don't you, when I say she can be a bit loud and not everyone gets on with her. I think I know what you'll say, but let me know what you think. Ring me back as soon as you can, won't you? Hope you can still come. Question 2. You hear two friends talking about the weekend. Hi, Martin. Did you have a great weekend? Well, you know my brother Toby lives in Australia, don't you? He's back, but only for two weeks. He'd promised we would have a weekend away together, and he suggested this adventure camp. He said he'd chosen it because he knew I'd love it, and I did. What I didn't know was that he'd also invited three of his old school friends, and he spent most of the time catching up with them while I did rock climbing and sailing on my own. I met some quite cool people my own age, but that wasn't why we went, was it? Hi, Martin. Did you have a great weekend? Well, you know my brother Toby lives in Australia, don't you? He's back, but only for two weeks. He'd promised we would have a weekend away together, and he suggested this adventure camp. He said he'd chosen it because he knew I'd love it, and I did. What I didn't know was that he'd also invited three of his old school friends, and he spent most of the time catching up with them while I did rock climbing and sailing on my own. I met some quite cool people my own age, but that wasn't why we went, was it? Question 3. You hear two students talking about a school project. Have you started the science project yet, Sally? No. I'm still looking for ideas. How about you? What are you going to do? You always have such interesting ideas. I think I'm going to do something about chemicals in food. You know, what we put in our lunch boxes every day and what they do to us. Don't you have any ideas at all? Well, I was thinking about something like that too. I was watching something on TV about how fat's not always bad for you. But wouldn't you mind if I did that sort of project too? No, that's OK. We can help each other out, can't we? Have you started the science project yet, Sally? No, I'm still looking for ideas. How about you? What are you going to do? You always have such interesting ideas. I think I'm going to do something about chemicals in food. You know, what we put in our lunch boxes every day and what they do to us. Don't you have any ideas at all? Well, I was thinking about something like that too. I was watching something on TV about how fat's not always bad for you. But wouldn't you mind if I did that sort of project too? No. That's OK. We can help each other out, can't we? Question 4. You hear two people talking about a gym. I've signed up for a class at the gym tomorrow. It's the only way I can make myself get there. I'd really like to do some martial arts or yoga, but they only have fitness training and that kind of thing. But even if I'm not that keen on whatever it is, at least I go. They need to extend the choice a bit more. They'd get more people using the gym then, wouldn't they? It's open from early to late, and there's often hardly anyone there. I know. But at least I get to use whatever equipment I want. And it's in excellent condition because it's not used much. I've signed up for a class at the gym tomorrow. It's the only way I can make myself get there. I'd really like to do some martial arts or yoga, but they only have fitness training and that kind of thing. But even if I'm not that keen on whatever it is, at least I go. They need to extend the choice a bit more. They'd get more people using the gym then, wouldn't they? It's open from early to late, and there's often hardly anyone there. I know. But at least I get to use whatever equipment I want. And it's in excellent condition. It's not used much. Question 5. You hear a girl talking about a website. I need to get some information for our project about animals in Australia. You've looked at the websites Mrs Wilson recommended, haven't you? Some of them. Well, this one is the best. 
Look, you have to make sure you follow the links or you end up looking at loads of stuff which isn't relevant and you can waste a lot of time. But I found information I can use. And you don't have to worry about whether it was written ages ago as what's great about it is it gets added to every day. Unlike some of the other websites where the statistics were from a few years back. I need to get some information for our project about animals in Australia. You've looked at the websites Mrs Wilson recommended, haven't you? Some of them. Well, this one is the best. Look, you have to make sure you follow the links or you end up looking at loads of stuff which isn't relevant and you can waste a lot of time. But I found information I can use. And you don't have to worry about whether it was written ages ago as what's great about it is it gets added to every day, unlike some of the other websites where the statistics were from a few years back. Question 6. You hear a man talking about his job. You're not working today, are you, Anton? No, I've got two days off. I'll go for a run. Driving a taxi isn't a great way to keep fit, as you're sitting down all day. If I had the choice, I'd prefer a more active job. But to be honest, I miss it when I'm not in the taxi. Do you? Well, you know I love chatting and you meet such interesting people. Some can be annoying, of course, but I don't take any notice. By the end of a shift, though, I'm getting tired. All that driving through traffic from morning to night, getting people to places on time. You're not working today, are you, Anton? No, I've got two days off. I'll go for a run. Driving a taxi isn't a great way to keep fit, as you're sitting down all day. If I had the choice, I'd prefer a more active job. But to be honest, I miss it when I'm not in the taxi. Do you? Well, you know I love chatting and you meet such interesting people. Some can be annoying, of course, but I don't take any notice. By the end of a shift, though, I'm getting tired. All that driving through traffic from morning to night, getting people to places on time. Question 7. You hear a teacher talking to a group of students. So, for our school trip tomorrow, you should all bring waterproofs just in case of rain, although the forecast says the showers will clear up by the morning. But you never know, the rain might come back later. It's quite chilly today, but temperatures will rise as the sun is going to come out apparently by midday. So you'll also need hats and sun cream. You won't forget them, will you? Luckily, the humid weather we had last week isn't going to return till Friday, when we'll probably have thunderstorms. So we might have to move the sports day to next week. So, for our school trip tomorrow, you should all bring waterproofs just in case of rain, although the forecast says the showers will clear up by the morning. But you never know, the rain might come back later. It's quite chilly today, but temperatures will rise as the sun is going to come out apparently by midday. So you'll also need hats and sun cream. You won't forget them, will you? Luckily, the humid weather we had last week isn't going to return till Friday, when we'll probably have thunderstorms, so we might have to move the sports day to next week. Question 8. You hear two people talking about someone they met. It was a great evening, wasn't it? And it was good to meet Leo's friend, Connor. The New Zealander who's staying with him? Yeah. He was fun. He made everyone laugh. You didn't really think his jokes were funny, did you? I wanted to hear what Leo had to say about his new job. The rest of us could hardly get a word in. I suppose he did rather dominate, now you mention it. But he also had some good stories about living in a small town. Some of it was fascinating. I think half of it wasn't true. It was a great evening, wasn't it? And it was good to meet Leo's friend, Connor. The New Zealander who's staying with him? Yeah, he was fun. He made everyone laugh. 
You didn't really think his jokes were funny, did you? I wanted to hear what Leo had to say about his new job. The rest of us could hardly get a word in. I suppose he did rather dominate, now you mention it. But he also had some good stories about living in a small town. Some of it was fascinating. I think half of it wasn't true. Unit 10. Recording 14. 1. I'm Angela, and I'm a sales executive for a company which makes furniture. An important part of my work is travel. I drive thousands of miles every year, and that can make it quite hard to get exercise. I do care about my health, though, and when I stop, I usually buy fruit to eat rather than biscuits or sweets, if there's any available, that is. Two. I'm Ken, and I work at a garage. I mainly drive the recovery truck. That's the vehicle that helps motorists when they break down. Some people just keep driving without thinking ahead. It's the phone calls from drivers who've run out of petrol that really annoy me. Or the other thing is, I'm called out by the police after an accident. Some firms charge a lot of money for that, but I don't think we're too bad. Anyway, motorists have got insurance, or they should have. 3. I'm Charlie, and I've got this job delivering pizzas for a fast food restaurant on a motorbike. It's OK. I can usually get round the traffic jams. I got my motorbike licence last year, and I need cash. I'm a student. My subject's chemistry. I hope I won't need a job like this after I've graduated. I want to find a job with a reasonable salary. 4. I'm Hazel, and I've been driving a taxi now for three years. I can't say I enjoy this sort of work. The traffic's terrible here. But I've got three kids, and I've got to pay for food and clothing and so on. There's a lot of unemployment round here, so I mustn't grumble, really, I suppose. Unit 11 Recording 15. Hi, Ahmed. What are you doing walking on the beach? Shouldn't you be at school? Oh, I finished school. I'm going to college next month. I'm hoping to train to be a chef. Really? Well, you know I've worked as a chef for the last five years. I work at the Grand Hotel now. In fact, I'm head chef there. So you need to talk to me if you want to know what the job is really like. Well, what is it really like then? I'd like to work in a hotel like the Grand. I'm sure it's really exciting and you get to meet all kinds of celebrities. Actually, no. Chefs have to spend their time in the kitchen. The celebrities don't come to our part of the hotel very often. But you get lots of time off, don't you? Look, you're walking on the beach now at lunchtime. Yes, but it's my day off today, so I needn't think about the hotel kitchen today. Well, normally then, what's it like? You don't have to work all day, do you? I have a break in the afternoon, but I need to get up early. I have to start work at 6.30 every morning, and I have to stay until all the food is cooked and served in the evening. It's very late by then, well after midnight. Hmm, sounds like it's quite hard work. How many days off do you get? In my last job, I had to work every day except Monday. At least here, I have two days off every week. In the high season, that's summer, of course, I'll have to work longer hours because the hotel will be full. Listen, I must go now. I've got to do a whole lot of things this afternoon. But you must come to the hotel one day. You can have a look around. And I can show you the kitchen and you can see what we do there. Mm, thanks. I'm not so sure anymore about being a chef. Well, you haven't got to decide yet. Come and see me and we'll have another chat. OK, Krish. Thanks. Unit 12. Recording 16. This is the Fly the Web helpline. Nina speaking. How can I help you today? I want to go on a week's holiday. I've been looking at your website, but it's not always very clear. 
I want to go somewhere sunny, but not too... Uh... I'm sure we can find something for you. Have you looked at any of our special deals? Are you interested in anywhere in particular? Well, I was wondering The all-inclusive resorts on the Mediterranean coast are all very good value. They're all near an airport. In fact, I went to a fantastic place myself last year with some friends of mine to see what it was really like. It's got discos, nightclubs, and the restaurants are self-service. You can help yourself to as much food as you want. And it's only a few metres from the hotel to the beach. Or you could have one of our breakfast-only deals at the same resort. But you'll have to book quickly. Everyone's going for them this year. Neither of those would suit me. I was looking for something a bit quiet. OK. Well, maybe you'd prefer one of our island centres. My brother's friends had a brilliant time at once, so I can really recommend them. Are you going on your own? Yes, I'll be by myself. Well, we can book apartments which you share with three other people. That's better because you get to know each other really well. You'd have fun there. And each apartment has its own balcony with a view. I'd rather have my own apartment, thank you. Um, there's a page called Walking Tours. It has some good destinations. I'm interested in either France or Switzerland. Mm, oh, those pages are out of date, I'm afraid. They're last year's tours. I don't know why they're still on the website. Nobody wanted to go on them. We haven't got anything like that this year. But we do a multi-centre coach tour of France. Seven cities in seven days? Mm, sounds like it'd mean spending a lot of time sitting on the coach. All I want is somewhere quiet. Anywhere that I can relax will be fine. Maybe in the mountains. All the places near the coast seem rather busy. Well, most of our holidays are by the sea. But what about a camping holiday in the countryside? In a big campsite with really good facilities and lots of friendly activities like discos and barbecues. I don't think you quite understand. Every holiday you've mentioned is the kind of holiday I would hate. None of these holidays appeals to me at all. It's a waste of time looking at your website. Well, if that's how you feel... Yes, I... sorry to have taken your time. Phew! Unit 13. Recording 17. Mum? Yes, Sophie? Will you lend me £10? What for? And can you lend me your new jacket? My new one? Yes. And... And what? Can you give me a lift to town now? Start again. You want to borrow £10, you want to borrow my new jacket, and you want me to give you a lift to town now. Anything else? Oh, will you get me some shampoo later? You know, that nice one. Well? And can you collect me from the city centre at midnight tonight? Right. Shall we go through them one by one? You can borrow £10, but you already owe me £10, so you'd better not spend too much. You definitely can't borrow my new jacket. Oh, Mum! I will give you a lift to town, but not till four o'clock, because I'm busy right now. But I need to go now. You could walk, of course, or take the bus. You should get more exercise anyway. You'll go past a shop that sells shampoo then. I haven't got time to do that. And you really ought to be more polite. I feel like saying no to everything when you speak to me like that. OK, sorry. I'll wait till you're ready. So, would you please give me a lift? And could you collect me from the city centre at midnight, do you think? Yes, I will. But you'd better leave me to finish what I'm doing now or I'll change my mind. OK, then. Unit 13. Exam practice. Listening, part 3. Recording 18. You will hear five short extracts in which people are talking about advice they received. For questions 1 to 5, choose from the list A to H what each speaker says about it. Use the letters only once. There are three extra letters which you do not need to use. Speaker 1. I'm thinking about going to live in Canada. I've looked at loads of websites, 
but I really need to talk to someone who can tell me how easy it would be to get a job there and how much it would cost to live. So my friend Zoe suggested I talked to a couple of Canadian friends of hers. They said things like, you really should go skiing in Whistler and you could go hiking in Cape Breton, which is all great because I would love to do those things, but they weren't so good at the practical stuff I needed to know as they'd always lived with their families in Canada. Speaker 2 I went to stay with my uncle last week in Ireland. He also had an old school friend staying, and I started chatting to him one evening about a business studies course I've just signed up to do. He said, you shouldn't do that course, you know. It's much better to get a job and learn that way. And then he started suggesting different kinds of jobs I could go for. I started to wonder if I'd made the right decision, but I've thought about it for ages and I know the course is what I should do. Speaker 3 My friend and I were staying in a hostel and one day we hired bikes and went out cycling. We had a map and we'd marked a couple of routes we'd decided to follow which would take us along some quiet roads to the beach. We mentioned where we were going to the hostel manager and he said... You'd better not cycle along those roads as they can get busy. Why don't you take these tracks across the fields instead? He showed us on the map, so that's what we did. And we got hopelessly lost and never actually found the beach. The roads would have been so much easier. Speaker 4 My friend Alan asked me to share his apartment with him. It's in a new block near the seafront, and I thought it was a great idea. When I told my mum I'd paid the deposit and the first month's rent, she said, You shouldn't have done that. There's hardly any public transport. You'd better ask for your money back. I had to move in as I'd handed the money over, but she was right, of course. It takes me more than an hour to get to work and back because the bus is so slow. I'm getting used to it, though, and I don't want to move. Speaker 5 I went on a sailing course last week. We were given advice like, you must wear your life jacket at all times and all the usual stuff, but it was also suggested that we shouldn't take any valuables in the boat, like phones, wallets, etc., the thing was, I really wanted to use my phone to take photos, so I put it in my pocket. I forgot all about it as we were so busy, but on the way back I decided to get it out to take a photo, and it wasn't there. It must have slipped out. I hadn't even used it, so I could have left it behind. Now listen again. Unit 14. Recording 19. Hey, look, Claire. Isn't that Danny Diamante over there? What? The singer? No, I can't see him, Fiona. Where? Sitting at a table in that cafe over there. Uh, it might be Danny, I suppose. But what's he doing in a little cafe in our town? And who's that he's with? Oh, she must be his mother. I think she lives quite near here. He must have come to visit her. Look, Claire, she can't be his mother. She's much too young. She may be his sister, of course. Could we get a bit closer and see her face properly? Why don't you go if you're so excited about it? He might notice me on my own, but we can walk across together. We'll pretend we're looking in that shop window over there. OK, come on. No, you're right, Fiona. She's much too young. Shall we go and get his autograph? I don't think so. She could be his girlfriend and he'd be embarrassed. But we could try and get a photo of them. Oh, no. That's not fair. Why not? They're in a public place. We'll be able to sell it to a newspaper and we might make some money. We might get into a lot of trouble, in my opinion. Oh, they're going. Oh no, it can't be him after all. That man's much too short. 
What a pity. We could have made some money. Come on. We're going to be so late for college. Unit 15. Recording 20. Hello, James. Are you there? Can you hear me? Hi, Rachel. Yes, I can hear you very well. How do you feel? I'm fine. Where are you now, James? I'm about a hundred kilometres off the coast of Australia. So, it's not far to the finish. Do you think you're going to win, James? Well, I haven't seen another boat for a few days. It's a really amazing feeling to be alone in the middle of the ocean. I think I might win. Could be that you're last, James, and the others have all finished. <laughs> Just joking, of course. What's the weather like? Last week there was a terrible storm. It was really loud and quite frightening, and I didn't sleep for three days. But now the weather's completely different. The sea's calm, so beautiful. The sun's shining. It's almost too hot. Can you see dolphins there? I can sometimes see sharks and dolphins swimming in the distance, as well as so many different kinds of birds. Oh, I'm on my way to join you, out of this noisy studio. And what's the first thing you'll do when you get to Australia? I'll spend two hours in a hot bath, I think. Oh, and I must get my hair cut. But the very first thing is to... Hello? James? Are you still there? Oh, we've lost him, I think. Hope one of those sharks hasn't come to visit. We'll talk to James again. Unit 16. Recording 21. Four burglars have escaped from custody only hours after being sentenced to ten years in prison. They were being transferred from the law courts in Manchester to Strangeways Prison. They had been found guilty of stealing electrical goods and money from shops in the Manchester area. It is thought that they were all members of the same gang. They escaped from the van in which they were being transported when the driver was forced to stop because of a tree across the road. It is believed that the tree was placed there by other members of the gang who had been informed of the route to be taken by the van. A full investigation of the events leading to the escape has been ordered and anyone with information is asked to contact the police to help with their inquiries. And now over to Simon for the weather forecast. Unit 17. Recording 22. You wanted to see me, Mrs Seymour. Yes, come in, Double X. I have an important mission for you. I want you to follow a man and find out all about him. If you find him, I'll be extremely pleased. Who is he? If I knew that, I wouldn't be giving you this job. Here's a photo of him. Hmm. But this is all out of focus. It's impossible to tell what he looks like. If we had a better picture, we'd give it to you. Anyway, we've had an anonymous tip-off, so we know he's a spy and we know he works in London. Didn't your source tell you who he works for? If she'd told us that, I wouldn't have needed to ask for your help. So, the source is a woman? Yes. She phoned and then sent us this photo through the post, but we couldn't trace her number. That's bad. It would give me somewhere to start if I knew her phone number. It's a pity we haven't got a better photo. It's just a man standing beside a door. It is a bit clearer if you look at it with your eyes half closed. Hmm. Wait a minute. There's a number on the door. 42. Oh, no. It can't be. But it is. What? What is it? Well, this is very embarrassing. But I'm afraid that's my front door. And the man standing outside it is me. 
Unit 18. Recording 23. Today I'm going to explain how to make one of my own favourites. I think I enjoy making it as much as eating it. <laughs> you need a large tin and I'll give you a complete list of ingredients at the end. First of all, beat the butter and sugar together. Continue doing this until the mixture begins to look pale and fluffy. Then pour in the eggs. Avoid adding the eggs all at the same time. You should add them slowly and keep beating all the time. Next, add the flour. And don't forget to add the baking powder or you'll end up with a biscuit rather than a cake. Now for the fruit. I recommend using sultanas and apricots. But if you prefer to use dates or raisins, that's fine. Some people like to add some nuts too, but you needn't include them if you prefer not to. If you decide to use nuts, chop them up small. Mix everything together and pour the mixture into the tin. Bake in the oven for about one and a quarter hours. Remember to check if the fruitcake is ready after about an hour, as everyone's oven is slightly different. Let the cake cool for about half an hour. If you want to ice the cake, mix up some icing sugar with water. I suggest adding a little lemon juice as well. Don't try to ice the cake until it's completely cold. If you decide not to ice it, just sprinkle some sugar on top. One word of warning, don't expect to have much fruit cake left after a couple of hours. It's delicious. My family can't resist it. And now, here's the list of ingredients you need. Unit 19. Recording 24. Is everybody here? Yes. Good. Now, listen carefully. I hope you've all had a good day today. I wish the weather were better for you. It's very unusual to have so much snow and rain here at this time of year. Some of you were asking about tomorrow. Well, we're going, unless the weather gets much worse during the night. OK? So, provided that it doesn't snow too heavily tonight, I'll see you back here at 6 o'clock. Set your alarms for 5.30. We'll take our breakfast with us because we won't reach the top of the mountain unless we set out early, before it's light. So be here tomorrow morning with everything you need. You've all got a list. You need a whistle, in case you get separated from the rest of the group, warm, waterproof clothes and gloves, and a good pair of boots. Don't forget the maps I gave you. I'd rather you didn't bring large cameras, as they'll be a nuisance. Mm. Now, is everyone happy and looking forward to tomorrow? Mm. <laughs> you all look rather worried. <laughs> There's really no need. As long as we all stay together and you follow my instructions, we'll have a great time. I've never lost anyone up there yet. <laughs> I wish you'd come a few weeks ago when the weather was better because we could have done so many more walks then. Never mind. There's always next year. It's time we had dinner now, so if anyone has any questions, you can ask me on the way to the dining hall. Let's go in. Unit 20. Recording 25. Good morning. Here is the news for Wednesday the 5th of September. The Prime Minister is in Washington to attend an international trade conference. He'll spend two days at the conference, and after that he'll have talks at the White House with the President. At the weekend, he'll fly to Mexico. Singer Moira McNabb has suffered problems at the start of her tour of Europe with the cancellation of her London concert. She had been holidaying on the north coast of Africa before her tour, and was injured on the plane coming to England. Her flight hit bad weather as it was flying across the Mediterranean, and she was hurt by a case which fell from an overhead locker. However, Moira says that she will be quite well by the weekend when she is due to appear in Edinburgh. A footbridge over the motorway between London and Oxford has collapsed, 
causing serious delays, with traffic jams stretching beyond the beginning of the motorway. Emergency services are at the scene, but part of the motorway will remain closed until this afternoon. And the local news. Police have arrested a man who was holding a bank manager hostage. They were called to the bank on the high street late yesterday afternoon, when a security man standing by the door of the bank heard shouting in the manager's office. The manager was released during the night, and the gunman gave himself up early this morning. And now back to Annie for some more music. Unit 21, Recording 26. Hi, Dawn. I'm home. Andy, where have you been? And what's happened to your jacket? It's filthy. OK, OK. There's no need to shout at me. Actually, I had a bit of an adventure on the way home. What happened? Well, I was driving up Wellborn Road when I saw flames coming out of an upstairs window. I called the fire brigade on my phone and then I thought I'd better see if I could do anything. I decided I'd better try and go in. I thought perhaps someone was in there. I got in by breaking a window. What? How? I remembered the toolbox I keep in the car for emergencies. Oh, yes. And smashed a window by hitting it with a hammer. The room was full of smoke, so I covered my face with a handkerchief. There wasn't anyone on the ground floor, and I was just wondering if I could go upstairs when a neighbour arrived and the fire brigade. They said the house was empty, the owners work in town. You could have been in real danger. Oh, not really. Well, anyway, then the fire brigade were in control, so I went to my car. Then the owners arrived. Poor things. Well, it wasn't so bad because luckily I'd called the fire brigade before the fire had spread too far. I hope they thanked you for saving their property. Oh, yes. Do they know how it was started? By an electrical fault, they think. Anyway, do you forgive me for being late? Don't be silly. I can't be angry with you now. Unit 22. Recording 27. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Claremont Castle. I'm Jasper Claremont, and this has been my family's home, where we've lived for over 400 years since the time of Edmund Claremont, who first lived here in 1600. This room is the Great Hall, and the paintings you can see here are our oldest portraits. The painting we're looking at now shows Edmund himself. Um, do you see the ship in the background? Hmm? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the one which he commanded during a famous naval battle. This victory was the reason why he became a national hero. He was given the piece of land where Claremont Castle now stands as a reward. Uh -huh. Uh, the next painting shows Edmund's wife, Margaret, who he married in 1605. Mm -hmm. She's wearing all the family jewels. Uh, they had four sons, George, Henry, William and Andrew. So now let's move on to the picture of Henry and William. It's the picture that hangs next to Margaret's portrait and it's the one I like best. The one who's sitting on the horse is Henry, and William is the one who's holding the book. William, who was his mother's favourite, became a poet, while Henry, who his father preferred, was more of a man of action. He fought in the Civil War, which broke out in 1642. Unfortunately, he supported the side which lost. <laughs> um, we don't know much about the woman he married, except that she was called Elizabeth and he had no heirs. But William, whose wife Jane was a famous beauty, had five children who all survived. Here they are in this picture from the year when their youngest son was born. Now, if I can lead you into the dining room, uh, yes. where we'll see some more recent pictures. Unit 23. Recording 28. Hi, Josie. What's up? 
Adam, have you heard? Tom Castle's the new captain of the volleyball team. Tom Castle? Yeah, and it's really bad. Why? They only chose him because he's the coach's nephew. Oh, that's not fair. Tom's certainly good enough to be captain. I think he's an obvious choice. Well, I still think it's wrong. What do you mean? Look, he's captain of the team. Why? Because of his uncle. Perhaps you ought to be in the team yourself, since you seem to know so much about the subject. I'm not tall enough to play volleyball. <laughs> Nonsense. Several people your size are in the team. Melanie, for example. She's so quick that she's one of the best players. You know I'm not into team games. Going to judo once a week gives me enough exercise. Anyway, volleyball would take too much time. They have too many practice games after school. Well, I've been training every day in order to be really fit. They may need some new people, so I want to be ready. You? You're joking. No, I'm not. The coach said that I play well enough, and the exams start next term. Some of the older players may drop out as they've got so much revision to do. Really? Oh, well, good luck then. But I won't be with you. Unit 24. Recording 29. Hello there. I'm Paul Dadley, and this is Studio One with all your favourite music and entertainment news. And first off, I am very happy to welcome actor Gemma Lewis to the studio. Thank you. Actually, shouldn't I call you a film star rather than an actor? After all, you've been world famous since making the film Starshine two years ago, haven't you? Well, yes, I suppose so. I enjoyed making that film, but I really want to be a stage actor. It was quite a surprise to get the lead in Starshine, wasn't it? Yes. I got the part in spite of having no film experience. How was that? I was at a theatre school... I was 15 and I'd only had small parts in some stage plays. The director chose me to play the part after visiting several schools. I still don't really know how he guessed I would be right for it. And you had no hesitation in accepting? Oh yes. I had a long talk with my parents before accepting it. In the end, I went for it, even though I knew I'd have to spend a year away from home. It was a chance I couldn't afford to miss. But you didn't make any more films after finishing Starshine. Why is that? You must have had plenty of offers. Yes, I did. In fact, I was offered two more films while making Starshine. But working far from home, I sometimes felt very lonely and I wanted to develop a stage career, so I came back to England. So, no more films? Oh, I don't know. I'd be happy to do another film later, but I'm booked up for the next few months. Well, Gemma, that's good news for your fans. Now, what about the play you're appearing in at the moment? It's great. It's actually a comedy, despite being called Dark Days. It's really funny. And it's at the Arts Theatre. So, everybody, don't miss the chance to see Gemma Lewis live. <laughs> Gemma... Thank you for coming to talk to us. Thank you. And now, some music. Unit 25. Recording 30. This is a tropical rainforest. It's also sometimes called a jungle. The trees are probably very old as they have very thick trunks. It's usually quite dark in the forest as not much sunlight gets through the trees. The plants that grow under the trees tend to have large leaves in an effort to get as much light as possible. The soil in the rainforest is often very poor, so the trees have shallow roots, but some of them still manage to grow very tall with few branches near the bottom. They put all their energy into reaching the light. Rainforests are full of wildlife, from insects and snakes on the forest floor to monkeys and butterflies higher up. Recording 31 
People often associate my country with cold and darkness, and it can, of course, get very cold here in the far north of the world. In winter, there isn't much light, and in some places the sun doesn't rise for a whole three months. We have more hours of summer than other countries further south, but the weather is nowhere near as warm, even though the light is much stronger and brighter. The climate is generally dry, which makes it feel warmer. Minus 10 degrees Celsius, for instance, seems a very pleasant temperature to us. The temperature is mostly below freezing except for short periods in the summer. If you're born here like I was, you just get used to it. Unit 26. Recording 32. Well, I'm a keen athlete, so I try to eat a balanced diet. I consume a lot of protein, especially fish and lean meat, and plenty of fruit and veg. That's no problem, because I like those things, and I love crunchy salads. But I also need quite a lot of carbohydrate to give me energy, so I tuck into pasta and baked potatoes. I love milk, but I try not to overdo cheese and cream. I can't resist chocolate either. I eat less now, but I don't think I'd want to cut it out of my diet completely. Anyway, I eat larger than average portions at mealtimes because I do so much exercise I don't ever put on weight. I have reduced my salt intake though. I never put it on food and I avoid junk food, which is full of salt and fat. I go to a training session two evenings a week with my local team. I've also joined a gym and I go there three times a week. I've never smoked, which is obviously a good thing, and I drink a huge amount of water. You really need it if you do a lot of exercise. And I also try to get eight hours sleep a night. I find it makes a big difference. I think I'm fit, and being fit helps me deal with stress and any problems that come up. Unit 27. Recording 33. I've always been able to sing in tune. My father has no interest in music, but the rest of us have always counted it among our hobbies and enjoy playing and listening to music. I love picking out a tune on the piano, although I've never really learnt to play properly. I got to quite a high standard in cello and violin, though. And when I was at school, I sang solo in the school choir. I wouldn't want to do that now, but I do belong to a rock choir, which I just love. Unfortunately, I hardly ever get to go and hear other people playing in concerts, as I live a long way from the nearest town. But I sometimes make a special trip with a friend. I've always got something playing in the car too, or else I have my headphones on. I'm really into classical music, but I also adore rock and world music too. Recording 34. Speaker 1. I've loved it ever since I first heard Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley. It's great to dance to because the rhythm's so strong and your feet just go with it. I think the electric guitars you got then were great. And I love the clothes from that era, the full skirts and tight jeans. The 1950s had a great influence on all the music that followed. Speaker 2 My mates think it's really strange that it's my favourite kind of music, but I love it, especially played on a saxophone. It always creates such an atmosphere and the voices of some of the singers are so rich. It all goes back to the US and the black musicians in New Orleans. But there are a lot of good artists in Britain today, and they're getting into the charts now too. Speaker 3 When I hear it, I always think of Texas. The songs all tell a story, something everyone can relate to. There are things about love and splitting up, and having a hard life. Johnny Cash is probably the most famous singer, but a lot of the others have been women. The chorus is always important, so everyone can sing along. 
I enjoy singing to it when I'm driving. Speaker 4 Well, I go along to a club once a month to listen to it. It's often just one or two people with a guitar singing. You do get bands too, but you mostly hear them at festivals and some of them have become well known. People write their own songs or they play traditional songs from different regions that the audience know well and join in with. You get a real range of instruments like piano accordions and whistles as well as the more usual guitars and violins. Recording 35 1 Two. Three. Six. Seven. Eight. <laughs> Unit 28. Recording 36. I've played football since I was eight years old and I'm 15 now. I play for one of the best youth football teams in my area. My brother, who's 14, is also in the team. I've always wanted to play in the national team, the under-16s, of course. And last week, we were told that a coach was coming from the national team to watch us play. He was going to choose three really good players to take part in a youth match against another country. The big moment arrived on Tuesday and we played our match. I scored a goal just before the final whistle and I knew we'd won. I looked over at the coach and he nodded to me. The whistle blew. I knew I played really well and I was sure I'd be chosen. I couldn't wait to hear my name called. I ran over to the other players but I was so excited I didn't look where I was going. I tripped and fell over and I broke my leg. I was taken to the hospital. Later, I found out that the coach had chosen me, but of course, I can't play now. My brother will take my place. The match is on Saturday. Recording 37 On Saturday, I went to watch the match with my leg in plaster. My brother played well and our team won, but I still felt really low, so I refused to clap at the end of the match and I didn't congratulate him on winning either. Then, when we got home that evening, he gave me this huge parcel. It was a football signed by some of our national players. He'd met them after the match and he wanted me to have it. All I could think of was how badly I behaved. He's great, my brother. Recording 38. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions 1 to 8, choose the best answer, A, B or C. Question 1. You hear a woman telling a friend about a conversation she had with her parents. So, what happened when you told your parents about Mark and you getting married? Well... I was a bit nervous about it because I haven't known him that long. They've met him a few times, but they didn't seem to get on all that well because Mark is really shy, so he didn't say much. But I was surprised at their reaction. They said they were delighted and it was what they'd expected after they saw us together. In fact, I'd expected them to be really angry. Why? Because... We've decided to go and live in Canada, and it means I won't be able to finish the course I'm doing.
So, what happened when you told your parents about Mark and you getting married? Well, I was a bit nervous about it because I haven't known him that long. They've met him a few times, but they didn't seem to get on all that well because Mark is really shy, so he didn't say much. But I was surprised at their reaction. They said they were delighted, and it was what they'd expected after they saw us together. In fact, I'd expected them to be really angry. Why? Because we've decided to go and live in Canada, and it means I won't be able to finish the course I'm doing. Question 2. You hear a man talking about an activity holiday. I've just got back from an activity holiday that my teenage daughter persuaded me to go on. She'd been on one and she was convinced I'd really enjoy the activities too. Well, I didn't have very high expectations as I'd never done anything like it before. The other people of my age and older did fine. I just wasn't very good at any of it. Although the instructors were very enthusiastic and tried hard to help me, I was just relieved I didn't break anything. I think my daughter was a bit fed up when I told her that, as she'd really thought it was the perfect holiday for me. I've just got back from an activity holiday that my teenage daughter persuaded me to go on. She'd been on one and she was convinced I'd really enjoy the activities too. Well, I didn't have very high expectations, as I'd never done anything like it before. The other people of my age, and older, did fine. I just wasn't very good at any of it. Although the instructors were very enthusiastic and tried hard to help me, I was just relieved I didn't break anything. I think my daughter was a bit fed up when I told her that, as she'd really thought it was the perfect holiday for me. Question 3. You hear two people talking about a film. So... What did you think of the film? Well, it was good, really. I liked the storyline, and the characters were very convincing, too. They were. The actors were great. Just right for the roles. Mm. And the action scenes were amazing. Quite scary, in fact. I was sure they weren't going to survive when their car crashed near the end. What about the final scene, though? I couldn't make out what was going on with the main character's son. Did he just drive away and leave them all? It wasn't obvious, was it? I think he was going for help, though. So, what did you think of the film? Well, it was good, really. I liked the storyline, and the characters were very convincing, too. They were. The actors were great. Just right for the roles. Mm. And the action scenes were amazing. Quite scary, in fact. I was sure they weren't going to survive when their car crashed near the end. What about the final scene, though? I couldn't make out what was going on with the main character's son. Did he just drive away and leave them all? It wasn't obvious, was it? I think he was going for help, though. Question 4. You hear a couple talking about their hotel. Are you glad we chose this hotel? I rather like it. Of course. The room's great. I like the views over the river. Fancy going for a walk? It's a lovely sunny day and I could do with some exercise. Yeah, and we could see what's on at the cinema tonight while we're out. That's a good idea. Or maybe a concert. I saw something advertised down in the lobby. Let's have a look then, and we'll get lunch while we're out, shall we? Breakfast wasn't very filling. Lots of fresh fruit and strong coffee, but no eggs or anything. Hmm, that suited me, but it would have been nice to have the choice. Are you glad we chose this hotel? I rather like it. Of course. The room's great. I like the views over the river. Fancy going for a walk? It's a lovely sunny day and I could do with some exercise. Yeah, and we could see what's on at the cinema tonight while we're out. That's a good idea. Or maybe a concert. I saw something advertised down in the lobby. 
let's have a look then, and we'll get lunch while we're out, shall we? Breakfast wasn't very filling. Lots of fresh fruit and strong coffee, but no eggs or anything. Hmm, that suited me, but it would have been nice to have the choice. Question five. You hear two friends talking about a football match. <laughs> What a brilliant match. Yeah, it was. Predictable result, I suppose. We were bound to be beaten by a top team like that. I was amazed by just how good they were. I've never seen anyone of that level playing before. Our team did their best, but it made me realise that the club will need a lot more money if it wants to keep competing at this level next season. Yeah, they've got the training and dedication, but they need more than that. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> What a brilliant match. Yeah, it was. Predictable result, I suppose. We were bound to be beaten by a top team like that. I was amazed by just how good they were. I've never seen anyone of that level playing before. Our team did their best, but it made me realise that the club will need a lot more money if it wants to keep competing at this level next season. Yeah, they've got the training and dedication, but they need more than that. <laughs> That's the problem. Question six. You hear a voicemail message. Mum, it's me. I really need to speak to you about something. Can you call me straight back? The thing is, I've had a letter from the bank saying that I haven't got any money left in my account and that they've stopped my bank card. I know it's a mistake and I've arranged to go in and sort it out, but I won't have much cash for a couple of days. So I was wondering if you could take me to the supermarket this afternoon. I've got enough to buy some food, but not for the bus fare, too. Thanks. Mum, it's me. I really need to speak to you about something. Can you call me straight back? The thing is, I've had a letter from the bank saying that I haven't got any money left in my account and that they've stopped my bank card. I know it's a mistake and I've arranged to go in and sort it out, but I won't have much cash for a couple of days. So I was wondering if you could take me to the supermarket this afternoon. I've got enough to buy some food, but not for the bus fare too. Thanks. Question seven. You hear two people talking about a new colleague. Have you met Anya yet? You know, the new person. Some people are saying she's hard to get on with, but I think she's just a bit shy. I've met her, yes. In fact, we're working on a project together, the new marketing plan. She's meeting all the deadlines OK. I don't find her difficult. I think the problem is that she's got something on her mind, but won't tell anyone. She does find it hard to concentrate at times. That's a shame. Perhaps I'll try and have a word with her. That's a good idea, I'm sure. Have you met Anya yet? You know, the new person. Some people are saying she's hard to get on with, but I think she's just a bit shy. I've met her, yes. In fact, we're working on a project together, the new marketing plan. She's meeting all the deadlines OK. I don't find her difficult. I think the problem is that she's got something on her mind, but won't tell anyone. She does find it hard to concentrate at times. That's a shame. Perhaps I'll try and have a word with her. That's a good idea, I'm sure. Question eight. You hear an actor talking about her work. It might sound strange, but I don't actually enjoy being famous. I find the promotion side of my work very stressful, especially answering journalists' questions. I get so anxious. What I love is the real work, you know, being on stage or in front of the camera. It's amazing. Even things you might think are really boring, like having your face made up before a show or learning your lines, don't put me off. 
It really depends on what you're like as a person, I suppose. If you're confident in yourself, then public appearances are straightforward. It might sound strange, but I don't actually enjoy being famous. I find the promotion side of my work very stressful, especially answering journalists' questions. I get so anxious. What I love is the real work, you know, being on stage or in front of the camera. It's amazing. Even things you might think are really boring, like having your face made up before a show or learning your lines, don't put me off. It really depends on what you're like as a person, I suppose. If you're confident in yourself, then public appearances are straightforward. Unit 29. Recording 39. So, as you know, we're going to look at the development of early civilizations this term. And to start with, I've got two pictures for you to look at. The first is of some prehistoric cave paintings in France. These animals were probably drawn at least 17,000 years ago. If you consider that they were drawn at a time when people lived almost entirely by hunting animals, you can understand that they were really important. Well, the means of their survival. And that's why these animals were the first things they wanted to show in their paintings. They're very simple, but drawn with huge skill. And then this second picture is of the Great Wall of China, which was built about 2,000 years ago. It's been restored, of course, and it's a great tourist attraction now, but it was originally built to protect the border and prevent invasion by different tribes. There were towers where soldiers used to stand and guard the wall all the time. Now, what I'd like you to do is look at these other pictures and decide... Unit 30. Recording 40. Speaker 1. Well, the woman I admire most is certainly well known. You see her photo all over the place, in the press, online and so on. She's cheerful and very energetic and seems very relaxed when she's interviewed. But she has the ability to really focus when she has to. She's incredibly determined, very ambitious and an outstanding athlete. She was the poster girl for the London Olympics and won the gold medal in a very challenging sport. Speaker 2 The woman who really impresses me spends much of her life in the public eye. The way she dresses is always fashionable and at the same time she gives the impression of being a person who is physically fit and very self-confident. She's a great communicator, very charming, and people find her sympathetic. She's also dedicated to good causes and the well-being of young people. She was a lawyer and health administrator before she became part of the political scene. Speaker 3 The woman I have huge respect for is a very versatile actor who started out as one of the first female action heroes and went on to play a whole range of different parts in her film career. She is really a very talented and graceful woman and very courageous too because she's spoken out about a number of important issues relating to war and women's health and her views have made a real impact worldwide. At the same time, she's a devoted mother, raising a large family with her partner. Unit 31. Recording 41. Speaker 1. I find it's a great thing to do if you really want to feel calm at the end of the day and de-stress. You don't need much equipment, just a mat and some old loose clothes. The exercises are very varied and you stretch a lot and really improve your balance. It's incredibly relaxing. Our teacher is very good. She tries to give everyone individual advice so you can do some practice at home every day. Speaker 2 I've been playing it since I was 12 and it's really quite demanding. The court is small and the ball is very fast, so you have to have quick reactions. If you don't move rapidly, 
you can end up being hit by the ball or running into your opponent or his racket. I've had a black eye several times, but I love it. I find it really exciting and it's very challenging. Speaker 3. I've always loved team sports and this really is one of the best. There's a lot of running up and down so you get fit, but it also needs a lot of skill to use your stick well when you pass the ball and to tackle your opponents. And it's a great feeling when you score a goal. It means you've used all your skills. It's very satisfying. Unit 32. Recording 42. Speaker 1. I know it's silly, but I fell out with Mike over money. I lent him some and he never gave it back. So we had this big argument and we haven't spoken to each other for three months. I know I should get in touch with him to make up because we were very close friends. He was my best friend, in fact, and we told each other just about everything. Speaker 2. My cousin introduced me to Francesca. The moment I saw her, I fell madly in love with her. But I've got no idea how she feels about me. We spent the whole evening chatting and we got on really well together. But I haven't seen her since. I'd really like to get to know her, though. Maybe she'd go out with me, if I ask her. Speaker 3 I have a great friendship with Jasmine. Our fathers worked together and were old friends as well as colleagues, so Jasmine and I became good friends too, and we used to play together when we were kids. Eventually, we both got married and we lost touch for a while at that point. But then my brother got engaged to his girlfriend. He had a party and invited us both, and we remembered how much we enjoyed each other's company. So we make sure we keep in touch now. We phone each other every week. Speaker 4 I don't make friends easily, but when I do, we usually become close. Petra was a classmate of mine at college last year, and we sometimes had lunch together. We discovered we have things in common, like we both enjoy films... So we've been to the cinema together a few times now and had a coffee afterwards. Recording 43 I do argue with my family sometimes, especially with my stepsister. We quite often fall out. But in the end, my family are the key people in my life because I know they will always be there if I need them. Of course, my friends are important too, but I know we might not always be close. Most of my friends like doing the same things as me, shopping, watching TV and stuff. A few of them are in the same swimming team too, so we have that in common. We occasionally fall out over something small, but generally we get on just fine. My best friend is Mina. We're neighbours. I've known her since I was five years old, when she moved in next door. She's really good fun and very kind. Recording 44 You will hear five short extracts in which people are talking about a family party. For questions 1 to 5, choose from the list A to H what problem each speaker mentions about the party. Use the letters only once. There are three extra letters that you do not need to use. Speaker 1 I arrived at the party a bit late because I worked till 7 on Saturdays and driving there took a while because of the traffic. Anyway, we'd rented a large room above a cafe for my sister's engagement party and the cafe made all the food. There was masses of it, really delicious stuff. The room was also great as it had windows looking out over the river. It got very crowded because the whole extended family came, including her fiancé's family, of course, and there were lots of children, so it wasn't possible to dance or even move around much, but we managed to enjoy ourselves anyway. Speaker 2 Well, we arrived at about 8 for my grandma's birthday party, 
which is what the invitation said, but the party had already started. Apparently, most people had got there earlier, so it would be a real surprise party for Granny, but no one had told us about that, so we'd taken our time on the drive over there. Anyway, some other people arrived even later and missed out on the food. The catering was great. There were loads of amazing sandwiches and salads, cold meat, cheese and so on, but the children ate a lot of it before the adults got anywhere near it. <laughs> Speaker 3 It was our 50th wedding anniversary on Saturday and we had a lovely party organised by my daughter Anna. She invited more than 80 people. I'd never realised what a large family we were and I was almost overwhelmed by the emotion of it all. Anyway, there were lots of children. We've got four great-grandchildren and several great-nephews too. They were so well behaved, all of them. There were lots from our generation too. And a few struggled to get up the two flights of stairs to the room. A ground floor room would have been better, really. Anyway, we all enjoyed it. Speaker 4 My sister-in-law had a lovely party last Saturday to celebrate qualifying as a doctor. Everyone got dressed up, well, nearly everyone. The teenagers didn't bother, but then they're always happier in jeans, aren't they? And there were lots of children. In fact, they got a bit overexcited and rushed around until they got dizzy. They were all right. They just needed a quiet area with a TV and some toys or books. Anyway, they had a good time like everyone else. The best thing for me was that I didn't have to think about any of the arrangements because my son took me there and just told me when to be ready. Speaker 5 My auntie was 65 last weekend and the whole family was invited to a party. It was held in a modern hall down a little side street and not easy to find, but we took a taxi there rather than the bus so it wasn't a problem. It had a large balcony, so although there were a lot of people, there was plenty of room out there when you needed a breath of fresh air. The invitation didn't say what to wear, so I wore a suit. No one else dressed quite so smartly and I was a bit embarrassed. But everything went off perfectly and the food and drink was fantastic. Now listen again. Unit 33 Recording 45. Speaker 1. Well, I commute to London every day and unfortunately I travel in the rush hour. It all goes OK if everything's running on time. But it's cold, waiting on the platform and sometimes the carriages are very crowded and there aren't enough seats. The fares are expensive too, but my company pays for a season ticket so that really helps. Speaker 2. The service in my area is quite good. There are always lots of people at the stop waiting to go into town and I see the same driver most mornings. Most people buy a pass which lasts a week or a month but you can also pay for your fare when you get on. And if you don't know when to get off you can ask the driver to call out when you reach your destination. We only get single-deckers round our way. No big red double-deckers like you get in London. Speaker 3 It's always packed in the morning and you have to go down several escalators to get to it. If the platform's empty when you get there, you know you've just missed your train. Once you're on, you have to hang on to the railing above your head if you haven't got a seat. Oh, and you have to be careful not to stand too near the sliding doors. Speaker 4 Well, there's a rank right outside the station that I use quite often. Of course, it can be a bit expensive because you have to pay your fare and give the driver a tip. But there's a meter in every cab, so you know you're being charged the right amount. And if you share with some friends, it can actually be quite an economical way of travelling. Recording 46 Well, 
My sister and I usually go away together. We haven't got loads of money, but if you book well in advance, you can get some very cheap deals on rail travel and accommodation. We usually go to Italy. We love the beautiful old towns on the coast. We stay in small guest houses and then explore local places of interest. You know, museums, gardens, art exhibitions. It's lovely just being out of the office somewhere that has great history and food. I really like the outdoor life and sleeping in a tent. My parents have taken us for camping holidays since we were young. We travel in our camper van, so we stay in Britain as the ferry's expensive. We usually go to a holiday place on the south coast where you can camp. But what I like most is meeting up with my cousins there. It's the only time we can all spend time together, as everyone's busy normally. I love swimming and snorkeling and going out fishing on a boat, and we usually have a barbecue on the sand when the tide's gone out. We also visit a few places, but not every day. I'm studying very hard at the moment, so I need time to just chill and enjoy myself. So do my parents. Unit 34 Recording 47. Speaker 1. Well, I always like going for a meal with friends, and I'll go to a party if I'm invited. But, to be honest, I'm happiest at home. I get in from work quite late, so I just put some music on and cook myself something to eat. I don't watch much television because I've got several hobbies. I paint and draw, which is really relaxing, and I also collect old postcards and photos. I go to antique fairs and look in old junk shops and places like that when I get the chance. And I love catching up on recent films too. I've got a big collection of DVDs, so I'll watch one of those or download something. I'm certainly never bored. Speaker 2 what do I do after work? I like to get together with friends mostly. We sometimes go round to someone's flat if there's a big match on and we cook together or get a takeaway and then sit down and watch the match. But we'd rather go out if we get the chance. We go clubbing once a week, we go to the cinema, that sort of thing. And in the summer, we get outside. We go to the beach, go swimming and surfing, have a barbecue. I don't spend a lot of time in, but I do sometimes stay at home and play online games with a couple of my mates. And I tend to read a book rather than watch TV. Well, unless there's sport on, that is. <laughs> Unit 35. Recording 48. I only moved to this city recently, and I think I'm going to like it. I live on a housing estate in a residential area which is on the outskirts. It's a mixture of houses and flats, but there's lots of space around the buildings and some lovely parks. I work in an office block on a small industrial estate which is in a business district only about 10 minutes drive from where I live. The city centre is about 3 kilometres from my house in the other direction. There's a huge shopping mall there with every shop you'd ever want. I usually cycle to the city centre because there are cycle lanes everywhere, so it's a really pleasant ride. But it's also easy to drive because there are several multi-storey car parks in the centre. I used to live in a different city with a historic centre, which meant it was almost impossible to drive there. Also, because it's surrounded by hills, there wasn't much space and most people live in big apartment blocks in the suburbs on the edge of the city. My flat had a great view, but you live with other people's noise all the time and I got tired of that, so I decided to have a change. And the area was a bit neglected. It hadn't had any money spent on it for years. My life is easier here. Unit 36. Recording 49. Speaker 1. My favourite kind of food? Well, I love vegetables and seafood. You know, prawns and things like that. And I like food that has a lot of flavour. 
I also like ginger and spices and a bit of soy sauce. So, of course, I love stir fries. And I've never been keen on potatoes, so rice and noodles suit me fine. Speaker 2 I love hot, spicy food with chili in it, and sauces made with tomatoes, onions, and peppers. And I enjoy eating the meat they cook, like beef, pork, or chicken. The food is based on corn rather than wheat, and I absolutely adore the tortillas. The stews with beans are good, too. Speaker 3 me? Well, I just love fish and chicken cooked in the oven and sauces made with herbs and tomatoes or with cheese on top. I absolutely adore all kinds of pasta and one of my favourite things is olives. I like the large green ones best. Recording 50 You will hear a talk by an art student about an Australian artist called Anna Roberts. For questions 1 to 10, complete the sentences with a word or short phrase. Well, I've chosen an artist called Anna Roberts as the subject of my talk. She was born in Hobart, Tasmania in 1989 and she's a granddaughter of Edith James, who was a well-known sculptor in her day. Anyway, Anna is rapidly becoming one of Australia's best-known young artists – but unlike many other artists of her generation, she doesn't paint urban scenes. Instead, she's established a reputation for painting pictures of very remote locations, far from towns and roads, and understandably, getting to them can be very challenging for her. She sometimes treks to them on foot, but if that's impossible, she'll travel by plane, provided there's somewhere to land, of course. There's no way you could get to them by car or truck, I think she's had a few narrow escapes over the years, but surprisingly, that hasn't put her off. You see, the subject of all her paintings is nature, and she wants to show just how spectacular it is. For that reason, she has to experience it herself, even if it does involve some danger on occasion, like running out of water or climbing over rocks. She definitely doesn't mind taking risks. Now, I've been to several of her exhibitions and there's certainly nothing abstract about the landscape paintings she does. One art critic said recently that many of her pictures could be mistaken for photographs because they're so realistic. And if you look at the paintings she does of beaches, I can see why. I saw one recently with the surf beating down on the rocks and you really feel as if you're right there at the scene. She uses so many different shades of blue and green in the water. Just recently, though, she's done some pictures using different shades of yellow and orange, a new series about the desert. She's tried to give an impression of the lines in the sand and the heat. When you look at them, you can almost feel the sun on your back. People say, though, what makes her work unique is the way she portrays the light rather than the colour she uses. It seems very natural. Other artists aren't always so successful. In addition, her pictures are very large, which is equally unusual, and she mostly uses board for her paintings in preference to canvas, because it's smoother to work on. As for the medium she uses, she now paints exclusively in oil, although she started off experimenting with painting in acrylic and also with watercolour. I think she's found a style of painting which really suits her, and obviously other people think so too, because her paintings are selling well, and not just to private individuals. She's had exhibitions in several major cities, including Sydney and Adelaide, and a lot of her pictures are now bought by companies, because they consider them to be a good investment. I'd buy a few myself if I had any money to spare but unfortunately, they sell for thousands of dollars now. The other thing about Anna is that her talents don't stop at painting. She's done an impressive number of other things too, including writing some short stories for children and doing the illustrations for them. 
In addition, a number of her articles on painting have appeared in different magazines. And finally, she's also planning some other commercial ventures, including launching a series of cards and calendars later this year, which I'm sure will be a great success. If you're not familiar with her work, I recommend you look her up online. You'll be able to see some of her best pictures on her website. Now listen again. Unit 37. Recording 51. Speaker 1. My favourite programme is Big Brother. It's so entertaining to watch a group of strangers being thrown together in a house. I find it quite compelling. I've watched every series. Speaker 2. My favourite programme is still the American show Cheers. I watch all the repeats and I've got all the DVDs and they still make me laugh. The acting is brilliant and I love the characters and the situations they get into. Speaker 3. I really love Downton Abbey. The storylines are gripping. The characters become almost like good friends because you get to know them so well and you want to know what happens to them. I just love the clothes in every series too. What the women wore for balls and big events in the early 20th century was simply stunning. Recording 52 Well, to be honest, I like both. I loved the cinema from the moment my parents first took me to see a cartoon and the special effects you get in science fiction films today are amazing. But for me, there's far more atmosphere in the theatre and every performance the actors give is special and that's why I like it better. For example, I went to see a fantastic musical the other night which was funny and fast moving. The audience loved it. The theatre's great, of course. I've done some acting myself, and being on stage is quite an experience. Giving a performance in front of an audience is amazing. But what I love most is escaping from the world and going into the cinema. I love the darkness and hearing the soundtrack at full volume. Film music is fantastic these days. You see exotic locations on the screen, and your imagination takes off. Recording 53. Offering the audience a lively view of the origins of skateboard culture in early 1970s Los Angeles, director Stacy Peralta's film Dogtown and the Z-Boys gives us a surprisingly moving and dramatic view of recent history. The film is narrated by actor Sean Penn, who is superb. He grew up in the neighborhood between Santa Monica and Venice Beach, which was nicknamed Dogtown. Richard Gere is paired with Jennifer Lopez in Shall We Dance, a delightful film about a lawyer whose interest in life is unexpectedly restored by a dance teacher. He first glimpses her from a train window as he travels home from work. There are some memorable dance sequences and some very convincing characters, some of the supporting actors give outstanding performances and certainly deserve bigger parts. Unit 38. Recording 54. Well, our house in the suburbs is modern and detached, like many houses in the U.S. It's made of wood and we have shutters at the windows and a fence around our yard. I guess the house itself is quite spacious, really. Downstairs, there's a large living room, a dining room, a study, and a fitted kitchen. We also have a utility room with the washing machine, dryer, and freezer in it, and a basement where my dad keeps all his DIY stuff. You know, tools and paint and stuff. Upstairs, there are four bedrooms. My parents' room has an ensuite bathroom, and there's also a separate shower room for us kids to use. We have central heating and air conditioning. We need them both because here on the East Coast, it's hot and steamy in summer and cold in winter. We have a big terrace out the back where we can sit in summer, and there's a double garage. 
We keep a lot of junk in there as well as the cars. Unit 39. Recording 55. Well, I've been trying to live in a green way for quite a long time, really. I'm a student still, so it isn't that hard. Outside the block of student rooms where I live at college, there are some huge bins for collecting plastic bottles, glass, cans and things like that, and I use those every day. And there are some collection points near the lecture halls where we can leave paper and magazines and paper packaging. There are also signs in all the rooms telling us to switch off computers when we finish work and not to leave lights on. I know I should do that, but it's so much easier to leave your laptop and TV on. But we have air conditioning installed because it gets hot in summer here, and I always turn that off before I go to bed. And in winter, I always put on a warm jumper or fleece, rather than having the heating on high. There's a farm shop near the college, and all the produce comes from growers nearby. It's grown without chemicals, which I like, but it's much more expensive than what you get in the supermarkets, so I can't really shop there. And I can only afford to use my car on long journeys, so I walk or take the bus everywhere else. My carbon footprint must be quite low. Recording 56 You will hear an interview with an Australian sheep farmer called Gina Ellis, who is talking about her work and plans for the future. For questions 1 to 7, choose the best answer, A, B or C. And on today's Green Magazine programme, we have Gina Ellis, an Australian sheep farmer. Welcome, Gina. Thank you. So, Gina, tell our listeners something about sheep farming in your country. So, I'm from New South Wales, where over 30% of sheep farming takes place. Uh, but in fact, there are large sheep farms right across the country, and it doesn't only go on in the places where the temperatures are lower. But the number of sheep farmers is in decline, and some farmers are moving over to cattle instead. I see. And I believe sheep farmers are experiencing problems at the moment. Yeah, that's right. There are two... One to do with markets and the other with the environment. There's a good market for meat, but the wool industry is struggling. Although Australia still produces about 10% of the world's wool, including nearly half of the top quality merino wool, demand is falling. Consumers often prefer synthetic clothing like fleeces, which are cheaper than woolen jumpers and equally warm, but the biggest issue for all of us farmers is climate change. There are major water shortages in farming areas, so it's becoming harder to find enough for our animals. Let's talk about the market problems a bit more. Are you looking for new uses for your wool? I am, yes. It's been put to many different uses over the centuries. Of course, carpet manufacture still takes a high percentage of our product, as it always has. And now we're looking for other domestic uses. The most promising seems to be the idea of using it in buildings as a form of insulation. Companies developing this have found it very effective. And there's also interest in eco-clothing. You know, um, clothing made from all natural products and produced organically. But it's a specialised market and may turn out to be uneconomic in the end. And why are you over here in the UK at the moment? Are you looking for solutions to your business problems? Well, yes. I'm working in cooperation with 10 other large farms to see if we can develop an alternative energy system which will produce enough electricity to sell as well as meeting our own needs. Clearly, hydroelectricity isn't for us, given the lack of rain and the water shortage, so I've been looking into ideas for using wind power. Britain has a lot of expertise in that area, so that's why I'm here. Of course, we have potential for solar power, but I don't think we could produce enough to sell on top of our own needs. That's interesting. What made you consider these options? Well, if the predictions about global warming are correct, farmers in Australia will have to diversify. That is, look for other ways of earning a living. That's my reason for looking into wind power as a form of income generating enough energy to sell some. 
Uh, of course, since then, I've begun to realise that being self-sufficient, uh, producing enough energy for ourselves and not having to rely on other power sources at all, is attractive. And I'm starting to think in a greener way. I see. And what do you feel about the advice you've been given? It's certainly given me a lot of food for thought and um, taught me the advantages of a more ecologically aware approach to life and work. And now that I have the information, I've worked out that the financial investment is possible. We should be able to cut back on the number of animals we raise and still make a living, which, as you can imagine, is good news. Great. So how would you sum up your feelings about your project? Well, to my delight, it seems our basic plans are good and we can carry on very optimistically without making any major alterations to them. And fortunately, the costs involved do seem to be lower than we'd feared. Gina, we wish you luck and thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Now listen again. Unit 40, recording 57. Well, I'm mad about crime novels, and I read a lot of them, especially when I'm on a long flight. It makes me think when I read those stories, so it's like doing a crossword. I feel you have to read carefully so you don't miss the clues. I used to like the American writer Patricia Cornwell, but now I feel that all the scientific detail she goes into about murders is a bit too much for me. I'd rather read something by Lee Child. In my opinion, he's a brilliant writer. His stories move really fast, and I think people love them because his hero is a real tough guy who's tall and good-looking and brilliant at martial arts. Yet he's also very bright and fascinated by mathematics. In addition, he always knows what the time is without looking at the clock. I think he's just great. Unit 41. Recording 58. Conversation 1. What do you think of this top, Rachel? I want something to wear with this skirt. Have they got any others in a different shade of red? I don't think it goes with that skirt. No, they're all this shade. I think you're right, though. Let's look somewhere else. Conversation 2 Can I help you? Yes, I've just tried this jacket on, but it's a bit big. Have you got any smaller ones? What size is it? It's a medium. I'm afraid we've sold all the small ones. Conversation 3 How did you get on? Uh, I like the style of the dress, but... I think this colour makes me look very pale. It doesn't do anything for me. Have you got it in black or pink? No, it only comes in that colour. I'm sorry. Conversation 4 This shirt is in the sale, isn't it? Let me see the label. Oh, I'm sorry, no. It's new stock, so it isn't. So, how much is it? It's £80. Our sale rail is over here. Well, I like it, but it's not worth £80. Thanks anyway. Unit 42. Recording 59. I'm 12 now and in my second year at secondary school. It's a state school, a comprehensive, not far from where I live with my family. I'm lucky because I live so close to the school that I can walk there. Some of my friends have to get the bus from the other side of town and it takes them ages. The school's very modern. There's a really new and well-equipped laboratory where we do our science lessons. I enjoy those. And we've got playing fields on site too. There are different teachers for the various subjects and the pupils go to a different classroom for each lesson, so we move about the school building a lot. We get a lot of homework to do now, which I don't like much, but I guess everybody has to do it. At least the timetable's varied, so there's different stuff to do each day. The only other thing I'm not keen on is the uniform. I'll be glad when I don't have to wear it anymore. 
It's a really horrid dark green colour. Unit 43. Recording 60. Speaker 1. It's important to be cheerful and friendly in my job. I get on well with people, which is lucky because I spend most of my day talking to them. I'm on my feet all day, so the job is quite tiring. But I'm very enthusiastic about my work, and I'm quite ambitious. I'd like to own my own salon one day soon. Speaker 2 I'm an energetic person and physically fit. I like to be doing things. I enjoy my job and don't mind working indoors or outdoors. I'm good with my hands and enjoy being creative. I sometimes design cupboards or shelves for people. I'm not really ambitious. I'm quite happy with what I'm doing. Recording 61 1 I used to work for an oil company, but I resigned because I hated it. I'm trying to change career and I'm looking for work as a teacher. 2 I do shifts, some days and some nights. 3 I was made redundant when the company closed down and I've been unemployed ever since, although I've just applied for a job at the theatre. 4 I had a long career in the police force. I retired when I was 55 and I get a good pension. 5 I commute every day. The journey takes an hour each way, so I don't have time to do much after work. 6 I do four long days, which is very hard work, but then I get three days off every week. 7. I gave up my job as a chef a year ago because it was too stressful and I'm still out of work. I'm interested in advertising and I'm going to get some unpaid work experience soon in an agency near here. 8. I was promoted last week, so that's very good for my career. The next step is manager. Recording 62. Speaker 1. Well, I have to say that I'm really enthusiastic about the course I'm doing now. I've heard a lot of people say that when you do an arts course like this, you spend too much time studying on your own, and they are totally against students having to plan their own time. But in my view, you've got to spend lots of time reading and thinking things through if you're doing this sort of degree. And I enjoy that, so I approve of the timetable. I personally think the lectures are very good. We have them four mornings a week, and then we get reading lists. Every week we look at several authors, playwrights or poets from a particular period and have to write essays and prepare presentations for our fortnightly seminars. If you've got strong opinions on something, you can put them across then, or when you go to your weekly tutorials. I believe it's a very good way of learning if you're well motivated and good at organising your time. Speaker 2 I found my course really difficult at first because we start every day with three different lectures. There's just so much new information to take in all the time and then we spend all afternoon in the laboratory doing experiments. It's all about test tubes and observing how different substances react and behave. But this is my second term, and now I'm convinced that the system really works. I've learnt a huge amount in a short time, so I really appreciate having the lectures each morning. I don't have a lot of free time, but we don't have to write long essays yet. I'm in favour of concentrating on the experiments for now, just writing them up and drawing conclusions.